To the celebration or dismay of many, Apple has finally released iOS 6 and WWDC to developers. A lot of the changes were good, but most of them were kind of overdue. I'm Jaime Rivera with Pocketnow.com and let's go through iOS 6 Beta 1 and all of the minor changes. After the update, the biggest disappointment I know many of us have is seeing the same grid of icons as always. Apple seems dangerously reluctant to change the style of their home screen, and I guess we'll just have to wait another year if we want to see a change in that. The UI has changed in some minor extent though. Some integrated applications have changed in their UI dramatically, like for example the App Store, the Music Store, and others. And there are some minor UI elements that have changed in Mail, for example, and settings to make the experience more fluid. The music application has changed dramatically. It's completely different to what you knew before. And yeah, even the dialer has changed to some extent though, I wouldn't even consider that a feature. There's this interesting use of blue at the top status bar within built-in applications like settings. And while we're talking about settings, you now finally get a Bluetooth button at the top and there's a new privacy setting for you to check which applications you're digging within your stuff. Breezing through the major changes, you'll see that Facebook integration is now supported just like Twitter was in iOS 5, but both services are now deeper within the OS than before. For example, you can now view calendar information, birthdays, or even your Facebook contacts within the built-in iOS applications, and you can now tweet and update your Facebook status from Notification Center. And yes, you can also do that through Siri. Speaking of Siri, it's now supported by the new iPad, which is a big reason to say finally. It now allows you to launch applications and also provide services like scores, schedules, or even player information in different sports, aside from also bringing you details and even trailers in movies. It also now supports additional languages like Spanish, Italian, Korean, and Chinese. Sadly, it's still a work in progress since additional language support sends all your questions to the browser instead of providing results from Wolfram Alpha like you see in English, for example. When getting a call, sliding up now allows you to decline the call, reply with a message, or even get reminded of returning that call later, which is also a welcome feature. Every one of these enhancements now works through FaceTime as well. And speaking of FaceTime, it now finally allows you to make video calls through your data connection, which is something long overdue. It also allows you to add your phone number to your FaceTime calls on your Mac and iPad. But sadly, the phone number integration doesn't seem to work yet on Beta 1, but it's going to be a cool feature in the future to have your phone number work on every one of your iOS devices. Notification Center now has a Do Not Disturb feature, which is very welcome, but sadly only half done. See, Do Not Disturb is beyond good in cases like blocking incoming calls from everyone, or people that aren't in your favorites list or on a specific group. You can also schedule when you don't want to be disturbed, which is also quite welcomed. The problem with this service, or at least for Beta 1, is that it only works when your phone is on standby. And I don't know about you, but in my case, when I'm watching a movie or reading a book on my iPad, I don't want to be disturbed. When activated, look out for a small moon icon beside the clock in the status bar. Safari now includes a really cool feature called iCloud Tabs. It allows you to view what tabs are currently open on your other iOS devices or Macs, sort of like Chrome sharing in some way. Aside from that, you can also get offline reading lists for articles that you want to save for later, and you probably want to read whenever you don't have a data connection. Very useful for the non-3G or 4G iPad. A very long overdue feature is your ability to now upload photos to websites directly from Safari. And yeah, you finally get full screen support at least on landscape and Safari, which is also long overdue. The iCloud photo stream also got enhanced. You can now share certain folders with friends and even interact with comments, though sadly, this feature doesn't seem to work at least completely on Beta 1. Mail also gets enhanced. You can now add filters for VIP so you can focus on their messaging only. You can also get filters for flagged messages. These filters can even be rearranged at your convenience. There's also this really neat feature that allows you to add photos into messages without having to look for the photo within the separate application first. Mail now refreshes with a pull though, the animation does seem kind of weird. Separate signatures per email account is also a welcome feature, and now it even supports HTML for that. Apple is also implementing something called Passbook, which has the idea of collecting all your boarding passes, tickets, store cards, and coupons, though sadly, this is not working in Beta 1 for us to review. Maps is probably the biggest improvement and most overdue change. 
It ditched the Google Maps as the backend and is now using its own software partner with TomTom and others. It provides turn-by-turn -turn navigation even if you're on the lock screen, and it's even integrated with Siri. 3D Maps are awesome, especially with its flyover feature. Sadly though, 3D Maps or even normal maps aren't really ready for international locations at the moment. They'll most likely be ready for the iOS 6 launch in the fall. Overall, iOS 6 brings some welcome changes I know many of you will be happy with, but Apple is definitely not planning to make any groundbreaking changes here. Some of these features like turn-by-turn -turn navigation and maps are sadly catch-ups to competition and don't really dramatically improve what others do already. Other features like passbook and photo stream sharing are quite unique and great improvements, but these are sadly not selling points for the UI. The company seems reluctant to change their five-year-old user interface, and while that's good to some people, it's definitely boring for others like you and me. If you have access to the beta, I sadly can recommend that you get it now. There are just too many bugs that make the experience intolerable, and if I were you, I'd wait for beta 2. That's it for our preview of iOS 6. Make sure you subscribe to our channel for more videos or future beta enhancements of iOS 6, and don't forget to give us a thumbs up if you like what you saw. That's it for now.